Okay, so I'm going to run through uh, the three transformations uh, quickly uh, that you are responsible for understanding, and I'm using the notes that we've, we've provided you with uh, parent functions. And so what I've got here is um, the f of x function. I've got the critical points or the characteristic points already filled in. I just used the graph that was here, and they gave me which points I wanted to use. I found the corresponding f of x value or the y values that went with those x values, and I filled in my chart. So again, um, just to make sure you're with me, uh, the critical points are here, 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 and here because it's where the graph changes. All right, so those are the four points that we use to fill out this chart. All right, let me get this out of the way real quickly so it's not a distraction. All right, now what we wanna do is we've gotta figure out what adding four to my function is gonna do and then try to come up with a name for what that is. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these f of x values up here and I'm gonna add four to each of them. So if I keep them all on the screen, it'll be easier to see. Okay, so when x is negative one, the f of x value is one. So what I'm gonna do is one plus that four gives me five. Okay, next, uh, when x is one and f of x is negative one, when I add four to it, I get three. Uh, when x is two, the f of x value is a negative one. I add four to it and I get three. And then when x is four and the f of x value is negative two, add four to it and I get two. So now what I've created is a new set of points that I can use to graph an entire function. I'm gonna use those as the four critical points. They're gonna be like the skeleton of the function. And then I'll connect the dots to draw the rest of the points of the function so that we could see what it would look like. I'm gonna do it in a different color, so I'll use red this time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna graph these points. So quickly, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and graph negative one, five. So that's left one, up five, one, two, three, four. Left one, one, two, three, four, five. It's right here. Okay, next one is one, three. So right one, up one, two, three. Okay, next is two, three. So right two, up three. And then finally, right four, one, two, three, four, up two. And you can see that it's actually the same exact graph We've just slid it up or shifted it up four units. So the entire graph is about is the same, but we just moved it up four. So what I need you guys to recognize is when I add four like this to all of the f of x values, I've affected the y values. I've affected the range of the function. So whenever we move up or down, that's a change in the y values. So when this plus four change happens outside of the X or outside of those parentheses, that means it's happening to the Y values. So a change in the Y values is gonna be some sort of vertical change. So when I add four, that means that I am moving up four units. So if I was to subtract, that would mean that I would be moving down um, and again, if it's outside of the parentheses, that means it's affecting the Y values. Anything that affected X's would be inside the parentheses. Okay, so now let's talk about if the change occurs inside of the parentheses. So this time, I'm actually changing the X values. So that's going to be some sort of left and right change. All right, well, one of the things that we've discovered over time doing transformations is X's behave opposite. So even though this says X plus four, and you might even get an inclination that I'm gonna add four to every X value, meaning I'm gonna move to the right, because that's where I increase on the X axis, I actually behave opposite of that. So I'll actually be subtracting four and moving to the left. So. The way that we've got this table set up is that you should think about it in terms of what is X trying to do? It's trying to get back to F of X. So what would you do to X plus four if you were trying to get back to just X? Well, you would subtract four. 
So I'm going to subtract 4 from each of these values. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. So now I'm going to graph the X and the Y column to come up with my new graph, and we'll see what happened when we did F of X plus 4. So negative 5, left 5, 1, up 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1 is going to be right here. Okay, negative 3, negative 1, left 1, 2, 3, down 1. Okay, negative 2, negative 1, that's left 2, down 1. And then finally, 0, negative 2, so don't go left or right, but then go down 2. And you should be able to see it's the same exact graph but I shifted to the left three, or sorry, four units because X's, when they're getting affected inside, they behave opposite. So when I add four in here, I'm actually moving left four units because I behave opposite. This type of slide where I was sliding up or sliding down, sliding left, sliding right, we call that a trans and some of you guys already know that from math one but that type of slide the formal name for it is a translation now how does this affect the uh, domain and the range well since I have affected the X values here that means I'm affecting the domain and since we moved to left four units all of the X values were decreased by four, so I subtract a four from all my x values. So my domain, which used to be from negative one all the way to positive four, now it goes from negative five to zero. So I subtracted four from every x value. Because I didn't affect the y values, the domain, or sorry, the, dom the range stayed the same. So the range was exactly what it was before, from negative two all the way up to positive 1. Okay, now we're going to talk about the next transformation, which has to do with this negative out front of f of x right here. So what we need to make sure that we're paying attention to is the effect that it might have on either the domain or the range and how that is going to affect our graph in general. All right, so if we just get our points um, off of the original graph, and then we're going to use those in our function. All right, so we got our points on here, and now we're gonna go ahead and apply this change to the f of x values. So since this negative is occurring outside of the parentheses, that means it's affecting the y values, and so that means that we're gonna have some sort of horizontal, sorry, not horizontal, vertical change. All right, so what this negative is gonna do, it's essentially telling us to do the opposite of whatever that value is, or multiply by a negative one. Either way, we're gonna change the sign. So instead of negative 1, it's now going to be positive 1. Instead of negative 1, it's positive 1. Instead of negative 2, it's positive 2. So now I'm going to graph the x and the y columns. Negative 1, negative 1, left 1, down 1. 1, 1, right 1, up 1. 2, 1, right 2, up 1. And 4, 2, right 4, up 2. And now what you can see is it's the same lightning bolt graph, but this time it is a mirror image where the top and the bottoms flipped over the y-axis. So when I have this negative out front that tells me I'm going to have a reflection, that's what that flip is. So I reflect over either the y-axis, the x-axis, 
or some designated di um, diagonal line y equals x through the origin. And in this case, it's a reflection over the y-axis because I affected the y-values, so I went from top to bottom flipping over. Again, I want you to note that it's a reflection over the x-axis. Our final transformation that we're going to talk about is uh, what happens when we multiply by a coefficient. So when we multiply, you can see that 4 is outside of the f of x, uh, so that means it's affecting our y values. So what we're going to end up doing is taking these original values from our lightning bolt parent function, and we're going to multiply all the y values by 4. So that's going to make me have... Uh, instead of 1, 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So I'm going to graph those, and let's, let's look and see what the effect is on the graph. Negative 1, positive 4. Left 1, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Positive 1, negative 4. Right 1, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Positive 2 down 4 and positive 4 down 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I connect the dots here of my critical points. And you can see it's still a lightning bolt, but this lightning bolt has been stretched vertically. So I still have the same domain, I still have the same x values, but I have been stretched vertically so my y values have been affected they've been all multiplied by four so we would say that this is a vertical because that's the direction we went in stretch times four and this number out front that four is called the scale factor so it tells you how much bigger or how much smaller your graph is going to get after you've been stretched. The opposite of a stretch would be a compression. So if I had some number, not a negative number because that's a reflection, but if I had some number smaller than one, like one third or one half, that would take this graph and shrink it down to where all the y values would be cut in half or cut into thirds. And so that would be a vertical compression or a vertical shrink, so to speak.